The map is via three protectorate and the players are Nexus of Reality and Ajax. Nexus on the north. Actually, I don't need to talk about factions because it's a symmetrical Seraphim matchup. Uh, first land factory, as we can expect, looks like three power generators adjacent here, then four. That is a convoluted build. So we're going first and second land, third air, and that explains the lack of power in the initial buildup and then moving into the extra mass extractors and expansion. Now on the south side, we've got Ajax. He is also going for first and second land with some of the weirdest adjacency that I have ever seen in my entire life. That looks like probably a future air factory here, maybe? That's weird. I think he's leaving his mass extractors free so that he can build mass storages on them later without having to reclaim anything, and he's probably going to go for a tech game. If I'm looking at it and I had to guess, Ajax is planning on hardcore eco-whoring and then moving into the T3 stage as quickly as possible, whereas on this side, Nexus is going for a more efficient build with maximum adjacency achieved and probably is going to be going for a much more spammy version. He's got four land factories on each side, plus the two in his base, and then he'll be moving out on both edges equally. We'll have to wait and see what Ajax has got planned as far as all of that goes. Uh, we've got two land factories on the front. Ma the land factories are going to be in place much, much later. I've got one land factory on the left, which leads me to believe that his ACU may in fact go to the left, unless we see something else to the contrary. Although his ACU might be placed... Did he really queue... Is that an engineer move order? Or is that ACU? Let me check. Let me check. That is ACU! Holy smokes! He's actually queuing manual reclaim on his commander. What on earth? So what I can see at the very beginning of this is that Nexus is going to have a massive early game unit advantage. He's building his land factories closer to the base, which means that they will be complete more quickly. You're cutting out 30, 45 seconds, a minute of walk time, depending on where you're going. Um, the factories are going to be done sooner. There's more of the factories. So he is going to get probably double the amount of T1 land out that Ajax is able to produce in the first seven or eight minutes of the game. Ajax looks like he is going for an extremely heavy air build. We've got lots of T1 power generators going down in grid formation. Those may get air factories in them later, or that may simply be his effort to not have all of this power bombed at one time. The earlier land factory on the left is probably because his ACU is moving to the right, where we can see him queued up for two land factories on the front. And then we've got an early tank and scout moving out to the expansion on the left. This is probably one of the most diametrically opposed sets of build orders that I've seen in a very long time in a game of this caliber. Of course, our players are 2100 and 2000 rating, so obviously they both know what we're doing, but I am just going to observe and we shall see what happens later on in this game. Uh, did you forget your adjacency? I think that was a screw up. That was definitely a screw up. And now we've got loads of land factories planned directly in the base. So what I said earlier may not hold true about that distinct unit advantage. Although we can see that there's already four land factories about to be six online for Nexus, whereas we only have four for Ajax. And some of these land factories are still a ways out in the queue. Might be a little bit more evenly placed after all. More T1 power going down for Nexus as he moves his ACU over to the left. And then we've got quite a few early units headed down to the right. Of course, you need more tanks in this area because your ACU can pretty much single-handedly defend from whatever in the early game on the left. Five engineers, six engineers is usually a recipe for power stall. Let's take a look at that. Nope, because he is... Oh no, I clicked on the wrong person. There we go. They stopped building and now he's positive. It's, it's interesting to think about because power takes a lot of power to build, which is slightly counterintuitive, but this is not your typical RTS. Because a lot of times when you're in other RTSs, if you're building mass, it takes power, but not mass. And if you're building power, it takes mass, but not necessarily power. And in this game, that is definitely not the case. All eco buildings take a substantial amount of both. Nexus 
is going to be dropping two land factories next to his ACU. It's very interesting watching a symmetrical cyber or a symmetrical Seraphim matchup because the Ilshivas are not as overpowered. The Othams are not as underpowered as you typically see versus other factions. So you get a much more even unit mix where you might see T3 rush, you might see extended T2 phase. You don't really know what's going to happen because neither player can leverage a massive advantage over the other. All right. More land factories going down. That is a total of eight in the works. And then we've got uh, nine and ten building for Ajax. And then we've got an even ten completed for Nexus of Reality. Do we have more plans on the outside edges? I am a massive fan of this build, by the way, because symmetricality. Nexus breaking the symmetry though with those two land factories so we can go back to being disappointed and slightly judgmental Ajax is not upgrading nearly as many mass extractors as I thought he would be at this point but both of these guys are planning on building loads of engineers for reclaim looks like Ajax is doing most of his reclaim over on the outside edge if we do a control shift you can see exactly how many rocks are available and you will notice that Nexus has cleaned his base up quite nicely and is now moving to the outside edges whereas Ajax has not cleaned his up at all so Ajax is on 5600 then we've got 7100 for Nexus putting Nexus quite substantially in the lead on economy He's also got slightly more mass under his control. So uh, Ajax is going to have to do something to bring that into check. Maybe he can capture one of the side expansions. Maybe he'll be able to ramp up his reclaim later. He might have just been focusing his build power on getting more units out more quickly. Let's go take a tank count and see where these guys are at. We've got a total of 34 tanks for Nexus. And then on Ajax's side, 41 Thams. So that is pretty substantial. 12, 13% increase over his opponent. It might be enough to swing something in the early game. He might be able to pull some shenanigans. T1 Air Scout headed down on the south side. Of course, you do need to loop the Air Scout all the way around the outside edge because in the center, there are nasty AA that will, excuse me, that will shoot down any scouts that you happen to send over the middle. I am getting my tongue tied up in a knot. It is already happening today. Looks like these guys are going to be able to stop that without even moving a tick. Excellent tank placement. Just let your opponents walk right into you. What could possibly go wrong? About a 10 interceptors or so on the north side will give Nexus a little bit of an air advantage over his opponent, although that is quite a bit of scout spam. Ajax apparently wants to know what's going on on the other side of the map. His intel is not particularly good. He doesn't have a lot of this marked, but he does know that there is a T2 land factory in the works, which has just completed and is now building a T2 power generator via a T2 engineer. Is that? Nope, that is more build power of building. So we've got the T2 jump at eight minutes. And we've also got a couple of T2 mechs completed. So Nexus still slightly, slightly ahead on Eco. Going to try to cut off the flow of units on the left with his ACU. There will be a little bit of a run by though. And he doesn't have many tanks in the rear with which to deny that. Thankfully, Ajax is taking the cautious approach and is not ramming his tanks directly into the base. That could have potentially caused some problems, but that will offer an opportunity for Nexus to deny. Meanwhile, on the right, Nexus is pushing forward against the tanks from Ajax. Ajax has also dropped a couple more land factories down. Is he going to go T2 land since he knows that his opponent is? I think that that is a negatory. I don't see one. Nope, there it is. 30% on the T2 upgrade. So he is going to get Ilshivas out for himself. Are these all going to be upgrading? Yes, they are. I don't know what's queued in those, but I would hope that we've got the T2 support queued. No, looks like two on each side or two on that side exclusively going for the factory upgrade. Then maybe that's something that I do that I shouldn't. Whenever you're watching one of these higher ranked games, you want to be trying to learn from it what you can. And one of the things that I think I do habitually is upgrade too many factories to support factories at the same time. 
which when you're struggling for map control as these two players are trading blows over the right and left expansions of the map then you are going to want a continual flow of unit and if you shut down a hundred percent of your factories or even fifty percent of your factories and try to snag that t2 support factory upgrade at the same time you are going to have a terrible terrible time maintaining map control one air factory to rule them all with the help of massive amounts of assistance meanwhile on the south side uh, not as much assistance, but still a single air factory, which is very weird to see, to be honest. Most of the time nowadays, you see multitudes of factories. It looks like Nexus is going to be relatively content to just build a radar and turtle, lock down this corner of the map, and wait for an opportunity to present itself later on to more safely move out into the world. Looks like Ajax was able to secure the left side expansion while Nexus is in control of the right, although that control is relatively flimsy due to the fact that he only has a couple of T1 tanks in his base and only one land factory on that side. He does, however, have a substantial eco lead. He's got all of his core mechs upgraded to T2. He's got one on the front line and another upgrading. And then probably will start upgrading his outside expansion mexes later. Something to keep in mind. If you're upgrading these mass extractors, you will see how this is at 106 uh, health. And it's almost done upgrading to T2. The problem with this situation is that if you have a mass extractor upgrading and you assist it with an engineer, the engineer will always finish the upgrade and not heal the mass extractor. If you heal a T1 mass extractor to 100% HP, it's only going to cost you like 15 mass for something like that. However, when it upgrades to T2, you now have to heal much, much more mass. I think it's something probably in the lines of 250 mass to get that thing back up to full health. So if you do notice that you have a heavily, heavily damaged mass extractor, it is pretty much always better to just send an engineer over there spend the 10 seconds and heal it up and then go for the t2 upgrade because it will save you mass in the long run however when you've got two people at 76 mass and they've got better things to do with their apm they might just not be too concerned about that nexus is having to defend his base where there is now a substantial amount of t1 rolling in he does though have ilshivas rolling up from the rear and we've got t1 point events in place to help defend that position. The ACU is going to use the GTFO move because, of course, you don't want your ACU on the front line getting pinched by units and losing the game to some stupid circumstance like walking your ACU into point defense or units. Right? Right. A lesson that we can all learn from. T1 Max going down in the middle. Looks like Ajax is going to be able to rebound just a tad. Most of the reclaim, though, is still on Nexus's side from the fights that did happen. Speaking of reclaim, let's take a look-see. Ajax is sitting on t almost 30,000 reclaim, holy cow. And nearly identical numbers for Nexus. Nexus, though, is about 20 mass per tick ahead of Ajax's production. So good for him, he is pulling out in the lead. We've got uh, T2 mass extractors to thank for that. Because we do have all of these mass extractors T2 now, as opposed to five for Ajax, number six is upgrading, number seven and number eight have not yet begun. And this is why you wait to upgrade your mass extractors on the outside edges till last. Honestly, this is probably not as secure as people make it out to be because there is an easy run by path over this direction and you can easily kill that. I don't know. You're between two large groups of units, so you might want to poke and prod and try to move your opponent into making a bad step and exposing a flank, but if I were if I were doing this, I would probably just take a tiny little group of units and run up in there. But who am I kidding? When I was in the middle of the game and trying to talk through it while playing, then I would probably forget. Same as anyone. Nice move on the mid here. We've got engineers that have now started reclaiming the base, giving Ajax a pretty substantial amount of mass. Of course, there is a T2 P gen there that you can either capture or reclaim, and capturing seems like a relatively dumb idea when it's as exposed as it is. You should just reclaim the son of a gun. 
leaving most of the point defense intact though to act as a roadblock for his opponent. Why on earth would you reclaim all of the PD if those PD can work for you? A little bit of a movement on the left. This looks like an outmatched force, but you will notice that there are four Ilshivas in the center. If he reacts in time, and he does, and kites back, then those Ilshivas should be able to wipe out the majority of those T1 land units without taking much, if any, damage. On the top left, we've got gunships now harassing the outside expansions. T2 gunships taking out mass extractors, land factories, and whatnot. Hopefully reducing the income potential of Ajax yet further to increase that 30 mass per tick lead that Nexus is now rocking so hard. Looks like Ilshavas might have been on bad move orders. You need to move that factory move order because that is going to get you doomed. You're walking all of your units into the front and you do not need to be. The total of gunships is now up to three and we might get to see a fourth at some point. The T2, hold on, T2 Air Factory is not building, so never mind, we will not. He is not even building any more interceptors. What would his reasoning be for that? Probably spending his mass on something more important, like the T3 Factory upgrade that he is now getting in his base. That T3 shift is going to be very timely, because he's starting to lose his grip on some of these areas of the map. Just the sheer number of T1 units is too damn high. He's got the point defense in his base that can hopefully deny a direct assault. He's also got Ilshivas moving up to the front that can slow these sons of guns down, but he is gonna lose all of the T1 mass extractors in the front of his base and a substantial portion of the infrastructure on that side. Over on the right, we've got a little run by. That's exactly what I was talking about. No, they're scheduled to only go that far. Why would you not continue running? You know that all of these units are distracted. You know that all of these units are in the wrong place. If you would have just kept running, you could have killed two T2 mass extractors and done quite well for yourself, even if you lost all of those units after that. We've got T3 land online for Ajax in the bottom corner and a T3 power generator as well. So a nice move up the tech tree for you. No T3 engineer as of yet. Lots of T2 power down. Nexus is just going to survive on his T2 power for the time being as he rebuilds what he lost just a moment ago. His mass is looking much better now that he is not having to assist that factory upgrade so hard. He is at 37,000 mass reclaim, 122 income versus 95 income and 45,000 reclaim. So Ajax is about 8,000 reclaim ahead of Nexus of Reality. And if we translate that into T3 tank terms, that means, oh my goodness, he is like nine to 10 T3 tanks ahead. Potentially. He may have not spent it on that. He may be getting mass extractor upgrades instead, converting that temporary income into permanent income. But nonetheless, he is doing quite well for himself. We've got T2 mass extractors pretty much all the way through the core. We've got three on this side. We've got a T3 support factory up on the front line that is now going to be building Othams to push up through the front in a more efficient fashion. A drop on a T2 transport, those are some ill she's moving towards the back. Unfortunately, he is going to drop kind of close to the ACU and he's gonna have to walk through the ACU to get to the base. If I were him, I would definitely push that drop back here because he would be able to kill off a lot of T1 power and potentially some build power. But even then, we've got T3 tanks available that would be able to put a stall to that. Ilshiva's moving into the base. Those Othams are going to have to retreat and come back to guard the factories. Ilshiva's focus firing the Otham, which is a good thing to do if there's only one Otham, but there are four, and those four should be able to wreck the Ilshiva's on the front line, especially with their, um, with their buddies coming up from the rear. What was I trying to say? Compatriots? Something like that. I think I jumbled the English slightly. Brink cannot eat English on occasion. Otham's now moving out on the left for Nexus to clean up the T1 units over here and re-secure that base. Ajax has indeed gotten some eco upgrades. He's at 118 to 119 mass now, not nearly the disadvantage that he was at before. And we now have a tack launcher up in the center of the map, hitting those T2 mass extractors, 
knocking Nexus down a peg. Looks like the Elzebas were able to pick off a couple of mass extractors on the front though, so damage was done to Adrix's eco as well. 113 to 109 now. That TAC missile will be able to hit several areas, but we now have TMD in this space. TMD will go up over here, I am sure, as soon as an engineer is able. And then in the home base, we've got T3 power going down. Is that able to reach? It is. You need to shoot that. You need to shoot that now. Because if you kill that T2P gen, you'll be able to kill so much build power. All right, Othams and Ilgis moving into the middle. He's seen the attack. He saw where the attack came from. He is probably going to try to eradicate the threat. Looks like T1PD going down for Nexus that should be in range of some of the build power and whatnot. They're going to get that down. Autumn will be able to eradicate it, though. I don't think that Ajax or Nexus, yes, he does. Okay, he knows exactly where it's at. T1PD is ready, and the TAC missile will go down. Nicely done, if a little late. Why is it taking so long to kill that? The T3 engineer is healing it almost as quickly as it's damaging it. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Between the vet and the engineer assist, the TAC launcher survived. When are you going to see another one like that? That is awesome! Sam going up in the front, just in case some hapless air unit were to wander by and we've got a t3 air factory upgrade going down now thanks to the t3 and en energy that was built ilshavas were able to move through on the back the acu did not notice it i think we've got a t2 mass extractor killed there two t2 mass extractors killed here and then starting to eat through a little bit of the power but the Othams are going to stop that shenaniganry in progress Looks like Ajax is down to four, 104 income, and Nexus is up to 145, thanks to the T3 mass extractors that are coming online in his base, doing quite a beautiful job of balancing it indeed. 48,000 reclaim on Nexus's side, 60,000 on Ajax's 12,000 mass advantage. Taking a look at the reclaim though, that is probably going to falter slightly. Nexus does have more reclaim available if he just gets the engineers out to take it. Looks like TAC Missile is going to be headed for these factories. What is the exact range there? Yes, he is in reach, so he can snag that mass extractor. No impact on the factory. Nope, it did kill it. Okay. Sometimes the radar indicator takes a moment to refresh. Two Othams versus one. Focus fire the Otham. What are you doing? Kill it. Kill it with fire before its friends come along and kill you. Nope, he is prioritizing the mass. So these engineers are going to have to walk all the way over here to rebuild. I guess that was a worthy mass expenditure. He got all of that eco down, taking Ajax into the double digit range. 68 mass per tick. I take it back, that was actually a pretty heavy loss. Nexus is playing the slow game here, just making sure that he's rolling slowly but surely across the map, securing expansions as he goes, killing off Eco, and increasing his stranglehold. Nexus is going to have to rebuild these mass extractors though. And finally, finally, the tack launcher is going to go down. One more launch, one more launch. No, it was not able to get that missile in the chamber out. Well done, Nexus. You have got a terrifying machine of war rolling out. Quite a few Othams on the front line. In fact, I think more than Nexus is able to field at that location. We've got 15 Othams versus 14, but several of those are quite a ways back. Uh, no, it is still going to end up in Nexus's favor because by the time the engagement happens, all of the tanks from both sides will be in range and there's quite a few Ilshivas over here that would sway the fight. Looks like Ilshi on this side did a successful raid on the expansion. And then over towards the south, Nexus has got control of that side of the map. So now we wait and see whether Nexus is able to effectively kill his opponent or whether he will make a deadly slip up 
and die to some sort of mischief. Looks like we've got another T3 power generator going down, total of three, which means heavy ASF production is probably in our future. We've got T3 scouts heading across the back, and it looks like we've got about a dozen ASF already in the air for Ajax 14. That's about a dozen, isn't it? And not a single ASF. Nope, I lied. There are six ASF to Nexus's name. So right now, Ajax could carry a heavy air win. Oh my, Otham engagement. That was not quite a stream versus a clump, but it was close. However, the superior numbers and the Ilshivas are going to tip the fight, and Ajax is going to lose out on his frontline force. That was pretty much all of the tanks that he had left. Now we've got three, five Othams on the left. We've got Othams loading up into a transport for a drop, and we've got the entire battle grouping on the right that is ready to push into the base. Here comes Strut Bomber! With a Sam in the base though, and enough ASF on hand to kill the Strat Bomber in one pass, I don't think that that Strat Bomber is going to do enough good to actually sway this game one way or the other. What? I see missiles flying. That comment must have been from a minute ago. All right, Otham's retreated slightly. ASF are going to swing in on the bomber, but the interceptors take the glory. We've got one mass extractor down, definitely not worth the cost of the bomber. Although those graphics are nice and pretty when that Seraphim bomber drops. The visuals are fantasticals. Ajax super heavily assisting that air factory. He could win air now. He already killed a pretty substantial portion of the ASF and Antis on the other side. He's over double the amount of ASF. If he went for mass gunship spam right now, there isn't any flak in his opponent's mix. So he could go kill everything with gunships. We got 20 ASF and 41 Antis versus about 30 Antis. And six ASF once again. So yeah, the air win is strong with this one. Send the strat in, send the strat in, soften up those targets. No, they're gonna circle back around and take out the Otham that are killing off the T2 mass extractor. It's gonna take two or three passes to get that dead. We've got mobile shielding moving out though. That is going to be able to prevent the kill on those Othams fairly easily. But it looks like Ajax, not Ajax, Nexus is power stalling, or at least he was. That shield was definitely fluctuating. Three strap bombers on the map, but we've now got Othams moving into the base, threatening a T3 mass extractor and factory over there. Gonna have to solve that problem, and quickly indeed, three strap bombers moving over to the right. Another strat out of the factory. I think Ajax is gonna rely on his ACU and the tanks coming out of his factories to deny this push. He's gonna start losing power, which I don't think that he can afford. No, he cannot. Nexus is far outstripping him in all manner of production. Those strat bombers taking out mass extractors on the right, which is probably not going to be enough damage to actually threaten anything. We've got multiple shields planned and no more Sams, oddly enough, even though, oh, nope, there is one here. So we've got two, four Sams and more power generators going down as the air production increases. We've now got six strap bombers in the air. Although the longer the strap bombers are produced, the more ASF Nexus will be able to gain. We're now up to 12 and Adric should still have the original 20, yes. So it went from about three times as many ASF to now less than double the count. Otham's gonna fall there. Looks like Nexus is gonna secure a win on that expansion until the Strat Bombers come in and eradicate all hope. 194 and last Strat Bomb. Are you really gonna leave it alive with 100 health? Is that how this is going to go? Really? Really now? That's really what's going to happen. <laughs> Lost a T3 power generator to two Othams on this side. 
Those Strat Bombers are now moving towards the north. Look at all of the shielding that Nexus is building to prevent these Strats from connecting. Scouts coming out, looking for the ACU. We've got air engagement, but it's over Sam's, so that's not going to end well for Ajax's Air Force. Seven Strat Bombers heading in. One, two, three, four dropped before they even get to the base. Three bombs off. It's not even going to break the first layer of shielding, and the Sams will take care of the rest. That is GG. Ajax taking the easy way out. Nah, I'm not going to say that. He's taking the honorable way out. Not going to waste anyone's time in this tournament. Going to accept his defeat, and Nexus is going to take the win. Well played on that one. Nexus was an absolute machine. Hero Tack or Hero NG. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, it's always interesting to watch a game like this because it seemed like Ajax was trying to be a little more aggressive and poke and probe and he was trying to make things work for himself. Whereas Nexus just went straight for the, I'm going to tech up, I'm going to eco up and I'm going to slowly grind my opponent into a paste approach. And obviously, that worked out for him. 213 mass income at the end. Well played, both of you guys. That is going to wrap everything up for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like and share it with someone. If you want to support the channel, catch the streams, or join the Discord, check out the links in the description. Thank you all for being at least partially insane, and I will see you in the next one.